Hi guys, this is Karan Krishnan, research microbiologist and your friendly neighborhood science guy. I'm here with more information for you today, and this time we're going to be talking about vitamin D. Everybody knows about vitamin D, virtually every allopathic doctor recommends taking vitamin D, and this time of year, it's winter time now, um, a lot of people are getting much more um, diminished amounts of time with the sun and so we're not making as much vitamin D in our in our uh, body naturally so a lot of people start moving to high doses of vitamin D um, now that's okay uh, but there's a significant danger if you're just taking really high doses of vitamin D and that's something called hypervitaminosis D hypervitaminosis D is vitamin D toxicity so vitamin D at really high levels can be toxic. It's well documented. There's studies around this. In fact, a really great study out of Nepal with the population there that was given very high doses of vitamin D by a group of doctors to overcome some of the vitamin D deficiency issues. But then they started seeing a whole bunch of other health issues that arise out of giving them too much vitamin D. The reason for it is a lack of balance. Everything in the body, everything in nature is about balance. It's about symmetry, it's about balance, um, and when you're giving really high doses or taking really high doses of vitamin D, you're throwing something off in, um, you're throwing the balance of something else off. What that is, is vitamin K2. So vitamin D works in many ways by upregulating proteins that are vitamin K2 dependent. An example of that is osteocalcin. That's the protein that actually takes calcium and sticks it on your bone, right? That, that calcium, that uh, osteocalcin, that protein, is upregulated by the presence of vitamin D. That's how vitamin D can help with osteoporosis, is it upregulates the vitamin that has to take calcium and stick it on the bone. Here's the problem. That protein, when it's secreted by your osteoblastic cells, these are your bone building cells, from the stimulation from vitamin D, it's secreted in an inactive form. In order for it to become active, you need vitamin K2, especially K27, to come in, cleave it, and activate it. And once it activates it, then it can do its job of sticking calcium on the bone. The problem here is if you're taking a whole lot of vitamin D and you're releasing a lot of these proteins that are vitamin K dependent, you're gonna use up your body's store of vitamin K. And that will lead to a severe vitamin K deficiency. And what does vitamin K deficiency look like? As, as a matter of fact, when you look at all of the symptoms of vitamin K2 deficiency especially, it looks exactly the same as all the symptoms of vitamin D toxicity. It's hypercalcification of soft tissue, um, you know, formation of these uh, calcified lesions, um, formation of things like kidney stones and so on. All of the things associated with vitamin K deficiency are exactly the same thing as vitamin D toxicity. And that's the same thing that occurs in the heart. There's a, there's a protein called MGP that removes calcium from the arteries. That's a vitamin K2 dependent protein. So if your vitamin K2 is depleted, you're not gonna have that really important basic function of removing calcium from your arteries where it tends to settle in because calcium on its own doesn't know how to get to the bone. You need those special proteins. So vitamin D toxicity can be a real problem but it's only a problem if you're not taking adequate amounts of vitamin K2-7, especially along with it. So as you're upregulating your intake of vitamin D, whether you're trying to battle the cold and flu season, or because you're getting less sunlight, or because your doctor or someone else told you to, make sure you're getting adequate amounts of vitamin K2-7 as well, so you don't end up with this significant imbalance, which can cause more problems than benefit.